Hey guys, this is Ron. So this is lab one uh, in a series of labs that I've kind of put together to cover some of the CCNA level objectives. Uh, I hope you uh, stick with it and you know really learn something. I know I've had uh, I'm having fun uh, building some of these labs uh, and exploring the the different topics of CCNA. So if you will. Uh, this lab is kind of geared towards those people who have never uh, connected to a router, have never really worked in this kind of environment before. So we'll kind of take it easy here. Uh, the picture you've got in front of you is the a snapshot of the back of a uh, 2620 uh, router. Uh, the thing to look for here is this console port. All right, This is an RJ45 uh, connection, uh, and this is what you're going to use initially to interface with your router okay so brand new out of the box or you just bought it on eBay or what have it this is how you're going to interface with the router until there's more of a configuration on there and then you can use things like telnet SSH you know what have it but initially this is going to be it so what you're going to need to to uh, connect to it is a console cable so the console cable it comes with every Cisco router. There are tons of them on eBay. You can find them really cheap. Uh, a lot of times when you buy a router, uh, people send them with a console cable. On one side, it's an RJ45. On the other, other side, it's a DB9 uh, female. So this is going to plug into the console port of your computer. If you don't have a console port to your computer, don't worry. We'll cover that. This is the console port console port of a computer so it's just a uh, DB9 male on the back of your computer you're gonna plug that cable in uh, screw it down uh, and you'll be good to go if you don't have one of those you're gonna need a USB dongle let me uh, kind of zoom in a little bit here so what what we have here is the uh, the DB9 and plugs up and it just runs USB to your computer. And then you're going to need drivers, obviously, for the uh, dongle. Uh, not a big deal. You can find them online. You can download them easily. Uh, these dongles are available on eBay or what have it. You know, pretty cheap. Not a big deal. All right. Once you've get it, gotten it plugged up to your computer, uh, you've uh, installed the software for the dongle, or if you're coming right into your, your COM port on your computer, you're going to need a piece of software. So this is a snapshot of Putty, uh, which is a software you can download online. Uh, it's a, I've, I've always seen it for free. I don't know if it's supposed to be free or not. Either way, you're going to set it to the COM port that you want. Make sure you select Serial. Uh, 9600 is the default. If you're using one of the dongles, it's not going to be COM1. Uh, and you can watch my other videos on dongles on discovering you know, which COM port it got assigned to. And you're going to go ahead and put that COM port up here and then open. This is another uh, piece of software, TerraTerm. TerraTerm's uh, pretty easy too. You just select Serial. You just do the drop down here to select the COM port that you want and then you have to select there are a couple of different uh, speed settings so if you this is the default typically 9600 8 none 1 no flow control so depending upon what software you're using you're gonna make sure that you select uh, that uh, because that's the default for Cisco and that's that's the configuration you're gonna need so if you remember 9600 8 none 1 you'll be fine alright moving on all right, well, that's it for the pictures that I put up. So let's go ahead and connect in. So I've plugged into a Cisco router, uh, and uh, let me fire it up. So you should see, uh, you should see uh, a little pop there at first. That's going to let you know the bootstrap that's on the router. Uh, it'll do a little memory check and let you know how much memory it has. So I'm running a uh, 2600 router uh, with about 128 uh, megs of RAM. Okay, so I'm going to pause it here uh, because the boot up sequence is a little bit long uh, and I don't think you need to wait that long. Okay, it looks like the router's just about finished with its boot up sequence. Uh, the last thing it usually gives us is this little uh, you know, snapshot of, okay, here's, here's your RAM, here's your flash, here's the interfaces that you have plugged into the, uh, you know, native to the router you know right now uh, depend upon what kind of modules you have plugged into it I get this little pop-up here at the bottom would you like to enter initial configuration dialog this is because uh, 
uh, this router has no configuration on it so this is oftentimes what you'll see when you buy a router on eBay that they've wiped the configuration from it now I recommend going through this at least one time just to kind of see you know, get a feel from it things it's going to ask you is if you want to uh, what you want your enable password to be what you want your secret password to be what you want uh, your IP addresses to be stuff like that so it's just gonna give you kind of a bare bones configuration to get you up and running now I recommend that you know one time just to get a feel from it but you really the the real powers in the command line so I'm gonna put no uh, and I'll just show you a couple of the real uh, kind of low-level stuff the rest uh, I'll cover in later labs okay so it's taken a little bit uh, to finish up and that's just because my routers are a little slow. Now we're at the greater than prompt. So the greater than prompt is a user exec mode. So we can we have a couple we can do a couple different things here. We can do a show IP interface brief. And I'm using shortened commands because Cisco allows me to do that. Um, so it's gonna give you a quick snapshot of you know what your interfaces are, what their state is, if they have an IP address, blah blah blah. Well, in user exec mode, I can do a couple show commands, but I don't really have any real power. So you end up typing enable, and that brings you into privilege exec mode. Now in privilege exec mode, I have a little bit more control. I can do a show running config, or show run for short, and I can see what you know what's actually configured on this router. Now there's not much on here, obviously, uh, but just to, to show I mean I can't do that command from user exec mode so if I do a disable to go back and I do a show running config it's gonna tell me it's invalid because I, I don't have privileges to do that so that's that's one little difference so there's there are more commands that you have access to when you're in uh, privilege exec mode so we'll go back now I can make you know, I can do some shows here. I can do some little things here. I can restart the router here, but I can't make any real, uh, you know, big changes here. This is not where I'm going to end up programming interfaces and stuff like that. For that, we have uh, global configuration. So to get to there, I do config t. If I could type fig or configure terminal config t to be short. And now I'm in global configuration. And from here, if I put the question mark, I have a lot of different things, you know, that I can program in here. So I could go from here and go into uh, interface config, interface uh, FA00. This is short for interface fast Ethernet 00. And I can put an IP address of 192.168.0.1 with a mask of 255.255.0 no shut and now I've got an interface that has an IP so I mean those are different things that you can do there's all kinds of stuff that you can do from that mode uh, I can do uh, an exit to get back to global configuration I can do a line con zero which is how I'm end up end up putting passwords and stuff on my console port you know th there's all these different little modes but but the point is once you're in global configuration from there you can make some real changes so your real powers in global config and then when you're done you just type end and it brings you back to privilege exec mode so now if I do a show uh, IP interface brief now my interface has an IP and I'm in up down state because nothing's plugged into it so that kinda gives you a feel for the command line interface you know we did user exec mode privilege exec mode global configuration line configuration console you know so there's all these different modes so as you go through your CCNA training uh, you'll get more and more familiar with all the different commands that you can run from these different modes but the point of lab one is you got plugged in, you got the router turned on, you got your software configured, and now you're into the router where you can really start to learn that command line. So I hope you learned something from the lab, hope you took something away from it. Uh, again, this was for those people uh, that have not 
worked with the Cisco router before. You don't know what a console port is. You didn't know what a console cable was. Well, now you do. Now you can kind of get running. Uh, and so uh, enjoy, enjoy the labs. Thanks for watching.